Hello, Seattle home buyers. Let's talk about the truth behind down payments. Many people think there's kind of this history that you need to put 20% down or 25% down when you buy a home. And for most, that is simply not the case. There are a lot more options out there and I wanna get into that with you today. So you know what's realistic for how much cash you need to bring when you're ready to buy your home. Here's what the mortgage report says. Although putting down 20% to avoid private mortgage insurance is wise, if you can afford it, it's a myth that this is always necessary. In fact, most people opt for a much lower down payment. And according to the National Association of Real Estate Agents, the median down payment hasn't been over 20% since 2005, almost 20 years ago. In fact, for all home buyers today, the median down payment is 15%. And for first time home buyers, it's even lower. It's only 8%. So that's usually on a program where you're putting 5% down or 10% down. Sounds like those are the most popular programs that people are opting for in terms of coming up with their down payment. In an expensive market like Seattle, down payments tend to be less where you're buying a property for 300,000 your first time out or more. Uh, and then in less expensive markets like, um, I don't know, Kansas City or something where you can buy a house for 180000 you might be uh, more easily able to come up with a stronger down payment. But the big takeaway here is you don't actually need to have as much cash as you may have thought. There are a lot of resources that can help you come up with this, and I will advise uh, despite the down payment requirement being a certain percentage, you will also be responsible for something called closing costs, which are things like actually not paying the real estate agent. If you're a buyer, that is all billed to the seller typically, uh, but you will need to pay things like the escrow company who handles all the paperwork for you. You'll need to pay the title insurance, which is an insurance policy that protects you in case there was a problem with the the chain of ownership there, and some taxes and fees and other things like that. So I recommend that you save between 1% and 2% to use for these um, closing costs as well. So if you're planning to put 10% down, it's a good idea to have at least 12% allocated for that home before you go out home shopping. And uh, let's see what U.S. Bank says, which is there are plenty of reasons why it might not be possible for some waiting to save up 20% down payment may cost too much time. So while you're saving for your down payment and paying rent, the price of your future home may go up. And I've had a number of different lenders talk to me about this, and they actually have uh, numerical financial analyses that they can do regarding the cost of waiting. You know, whether you're waiting to save more money, you're waiting for a change in the interest rate, uh, Seattle real estate tends to appreciate so strongly that it's just rarely a good idea to save if you don't have to. So as you're talking with your lender and you're trying to decide what to do, that's a great question to ask. I'd be happy to put you in touch with some lenders who can help you with this if you'd like. Just reach out to me. All my social handles are homeproassociates.com. Oh, <laughs> the dot com is for my website. Homeproassociates are the handles. Homeproassociates.com is the website. Look forward to seeing you there. You can also just private message me and let me know what questions you have about this. But the bottom line is you may need to save less than you think. The sooner you can buy, the sooner you can ride that wave of appreciation that we always expect here in Seattle and start building equity. Even if today's home is not your dream home, it will be a faster route to getting into that dream home than just saving alone. Thanks so much for watching. Emily Cressy, real estate agent here, and I'll see you on the next video.